Hi, kamusta? This is Sir Eman, a public school science teacher. Sa nakaraang video, talutuhan natin ang iba't ibang models ng atom. Sa video na ito, mas palalalimin natin ang ating understanding sa structure ng atom based sa quantum mechanical model. Kaya kung gusto mo manutunan ang tungkol doon, make sure na panoorin at tapusin mo ang video na ito. In this video, we will discuss about the electronic structure of the atom. So we will learn here how the electrons are arranged inside of the atom based on the quantum mechanical model. This is actually part of the sixth most essential learning competency in Science 9, which is explain how the quantum mechanical model of the atom describes the energies and positions of the electrons. Tara, simulan na natin. Sa nakaraang video, nagkaroon tayo ng overview regarding sa quantum mechanical model or tinatawag din na electron cloud model or wave mechanical model by Erwin Schrodinger. Okay? So natunan natin doon na in this model, it already views an electron as a cloud of negative charge. So it no longer views an electron as a particle but rather as a wave because of the dual nature of the electron acting both as a wave and a particle. So, dahil, so sabi dito, dahil yung electron no longer acts as a particle but rather as a wave, it does not revolve around the nucleus in a circular path, it's no longer possible for us to determine exactly the location of an electron. Rather, what we can uh, determine would be the orbital or the region in space where electrons are most likely to be found. Okay? Now, itong orbital na to, it takes on different shapes. Na mga yan, you have S orbital, P orbital, looks like, looks like an hourglass or dumbbell, uh, D orbital, and you have there the F orbital. Okay? Now, if we combine all these different regions, and that, that leads us to this electron cloud. Now, again, take note, yung mga uh, cloud of electron na yan, it does not pertain to or orbital, it does not pertain to the electron per se but rather to the region around the nucleus where uh, there is high probability of finding an electron. Okay? Now, specifically, the quantum mechanical model states the following. Let's have the first one. Electrons that surround the nucleus are confined or um, restricted to regions called principal energy levels or shells. Okay? So, in the mga electrons, they are confined in this region we call principal energy level or shells. So, what are these principal energy levels or shells? This is a region of space around the nucleus containing electrons, take note, having approximately the same energy. So, itong, principal, uh, itong energy level, actually, we have encountered this already when we discussed uh, Niels Bohr planetary model of the atom. Diba? Uh, sabi natin nun, you have here the nucleus and then you have the circular orbits around the nucleus in specific uh, distances. Yung mga yan, these are the energy levels. Actually, in quantum mechanical model, we also have uh, principal energy levels. The electrons are also confined, restricted in, in these energy levels. But um, unlike here, na circular path with specific uh, distances from the nucleus, dito, Hindi na ganun, ano? Kasi nga, sabi natin, uh, in this model, we view the electron not anymore as a particle but rather as a wave, as an electron cloud. So, yung ating mga energy levels dito, iba-iba yung kanyang, hindi siya very, hindi, hindi definite yung kanyang shape. So, for instance, yung first energy level, yung sphere na yan, nandiyan yun. Yung second energy level natin, itong bilog na to, at kasama itong lobe na yan. Yan yung second energy level. Yung third energy level natin, yan, at meron pa yung mga kadugtong doon. So, this um, energy levels, they actually overlap. But uh, basically, uh, in the quantum mechanical model, the electrons are also restricted in this principal energy levels or shells, which are represented by, by letter N. Now, as we discuss... Uh, kung ano yung mga binabagi ng quantum mechanical model from time to time para lang madali, para mas madali mo unawaan, will be using Bohr's model. Pero of course, alam natin that in quantum mechanical model, it views electron as a cloud of negative charge rather than as a particle. Let's proceed. Let's have 1.1. So, shells are numbered. So, similar with, with Bohr's model of the atom, in quantum mechanical model, these shells are, all, are also numbered. So, N 
um, you can it can take values of uh, positive integers one to a seven. Okay, one uh, being uh, the one closest to the nucleus, seven uh, the one being the farthest. Or kaya mo ng number, you can have these letters K L M N O P Q, these capital letters. Pero yung numbers, this will be more helpful. Okay, kung Bohr's model ang pagbabasihan natin, ay diyan ang kanyang itsura. Ano? Pero again, gaya ng pinakita ko kanina, uh, ito yon Okay, yung first energy level, second energy level, third, so on and so forth. Yung, yung cloud of negative charge na yun. Now, uh, electrons closer to the nucleus are held tightly and are lower in energy, whereas electrons farther, yung mas malayo, uh, from the nucleus are held less tightly and are higher in energy. We have what we refer to as electrostatic law, which basically states that if you have two particles which have which has um, uh, two particles having opposite charges, one positive, one negative, uh, they tend to attract one another. So, bawang electron, ito yung malapit sa nucleus, ando siya sa um, energy levels na mas malapit sa nucleus. Siyempre, mas malapit siya dun sa proton, mas malakas ang attraction. So, that's why it's held tightly. Okay? At syempre, mas mababa yung kanyang energy. As compared with electron na mas malayo uh, dun sa nucleus, so you have your positive charge, negative charge, malayo sila sa, sa mas mahina din yung attraction. Mas mataas naman yung energy na taglay-taglay ng electron na nandun sa, sa malayong distance na yun. Okay? Kaya naman yung, yung uh, energy levels na mas malapit sa nucleus, they are lower energy levels. Yung namang mas malayo, they are higher energy levels. Kasi yung electron sa nandun possesses higher energy. Uh, 1.4 so same with what we have discussed in Bohr's model, it takes an energy to move an electron away from the nucleus, from one energy level to another. So, uh, ganun pa rin. If, you want, if the electron needs to jump from lower energy level to higher energy level, kailangan niya mag-absorb ng energy. Kapag naman babalik na siya from higher energy level to lower energy level, it will have to emit that same amount of energy. Okay? Let's have 1.5. The farther the shell from the nucleus, the more electrons it can hold. So, mas malapit yung uh, principal energy level or shell sa nucleus, mas kakaunti yung electrons na nandun. Yung, mas kakaunti yung electrons na manatagpaan mo, most likely dun sa lugar na yon, sa region na yon. At kapag mas malayo naman yung, yung energy level or shell, mas marami yung electrons sa taglay-taglay niya. So, if, if we're going to take a look at this table, the first energy level can hold only two electrons. The second energy level can hold 8 electrons. The third energy level can hold 18. Fourth can hold 32. And the rest of the other energy levels can hold 32. So we will find out later sa nanggaling itong mga numbers na to. Okay? Nakasunod ba? Hopefully nakasunod. Now we also have what we refer to as the Ufbau principle. So basically what this states is that electrons fill atomic orbitals of the lowest energy levels, yung muna mga energy levels na malapit sa nucleus before occupying higher energy levels. So, say for instance, if you have an atom having two electrons, hindi pwede na yung dalawang electron na yun, eh agad-agad nasa third energy level. Hindi pwede. Dapat ang occupy niya muna ay yung lower energy level. Doon muna siya sa one. Kung ang electron nagtatagli ng mas maraming uh, energy, uh, I mean, elect ang, ang atom nagtatagli ng mas maraming electron, halimbawa tatlo, so, yung dalawa doon will be found in the first energy level. Yung isa, sakaling yung pupunta doon sa second energy level. It has to fill first the lower energy levels before proceeding with the higher energy levels. Okay? Now, let's have, uh, let's have the second one. So, shells are divided into sub-shells or sub-levels identified as ito yung mga types ng sub-levels or sub-shells. You have S, P, D, and F. Uh, S stands for sharp. P stands for principal, D stands for diffuse, diffuse, and F stands for fundamental. So, what are these sub-shells or sub-levels naman? So, sub-level or sub-shells refer to region of space within, so or inside electron shells or principal energy levels that contain electrons having the same energy. Kanina sa uh, energy level, approximately the same energy sa so sub-level or sub-shell, these electrons already contain the same energy. Okay, so para mas mundo natin ito, magkaroon tayo ng analogy. If you're going to compare an, elect, uh, an atom to a, uh, to a building, yung kanyang nucleus ay nandun sa baba, yung, yung ating uh, principal energy level or shell, yun yung mga 
uh, floors. First floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor. So, yung first floor, yung one, yun yung pinakamalapit sa nucleus. Now, alam natin, di ba, itong mga floors na ito, meron pa rin dyang mga apartment or yung mga unit sa loob. Ano? Kumbawa, kung condominium yan. So, uh, meron pa yung mga unit or apartment sa loob. So, itong mga sub-shells or sub-levels na ito, ito yung parang mga unit or yung mga apartment sa loob ng ating shells or nung mga, nung mga bawat floor. Okay? Or in, kumbaga, mas lumalapit ka na sa kung saan na matatagpuan yung ating electrons. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the number of sub-levels or sub-shells in each principal level or shell is equal to the number of that energy level. Yung palang bawat floor na yan or bawat energy level has different numbers of sub-level or sub-shells or kumbaga mga apartment. Ano? At yung bilang ng sub-shells na meron siya ay nakadepende dun sa kanya mismo, dun sa value ng N. Ano? Say for instance, yung ating, if, if we're gonna have the First energy level, so n is equal to 1, since ang number ay 1, isa lang kanyang subshell, si s lang. Okay? Kaya ito makikita mo dito. Uh, s subshell. Si 2, yung second floor, kung baga meron siyang dalawang rooms naman, kasi yung number niya ay n is equal to 2, so meron siyang 2 uh, subshells or sublevel, si s at si p. Si 3, si third energy level, since n is equal to 3, meron siyang 3 sublevels or 3 rooms. S, P, and D. C4, so meron siyang apat na sublevel. S, P, D, and F. Ano, so, kumbaga yung floor na yun, meron siyang apat na, na mga uh, apartments or units. And then, yung uh, 5, 6, 7, meron silang tiga-apat din. S, P, D, and F. Okay? So, nakukuha ba? So, hopefully, nakukuha nyo. Let's proceed. So, yan. Ano, yung first energy level, meron siyang isang subshell lang, S, Second, SNP. Si third energy level, SPD. Si fourth, SPDF. And the rest. Okay? Now, uh, these subshells, um, they consist orbitals. They consist, they actually consist of orbitals of much uh, smaller space. So, ano naman yung orbitals na to? We have already defined this a while ago. It pertains to the region of space where the probability of finding an electron is high. So, kung mag na yung final location ng ating electron. So, kung mabalik tayo doon sa ating analogy, you have your atom building, uh, energy levels would be the floors, yung ating mga apartments or units sa loob, yun yung sub-levels. Inside of these apartments or units, diba, meron pa dyan mga rooms. Ano? So, yung mga rooms na yan, those are what we refer to as the orbitals. Yun yung final location ng ating electron. Yung mga orbitals na yan, it can take on different shapes. Yung mga pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. Spherical, dumbbell, at more complex na shapes. Now, take note that each subshell, yung bawat apartment na yan, kumbaga, contains specific number of orbitals. Ano, yung S, yung P, yung D at F, magkakaibang bilang yan ng rooms. Ano, merong maliit na, na apartment, kumbaga, merong malaki. Okay? So, ito yung bilang niya. Yung S na subshell or sublevel or unit, meron siyang isang orbital lang or isang room. Si P na sublevel or subshell or Apartment, meron siyang tatlong rooms or orbital. Si D, take note, it uh, it has five orbitals or kumbaga rooms. Si F has seven orbitals or rooms. Now, take note that each orbital or room, kumbaga, can hold two electrons. So, si S, meron siyang isang room. Ilang electrons ang meron doon? Di dalawa. Si P, meron siyang tatlong room. E bawat isang room ay tiga dalawang electron, sa P na, na sub-level or sub-shell or kumbaga apartment, ilang electrons ang, ang probably meron doon? So, anim. Ano? Kasi 3 rooms times 2. So, 6. Si D may limang orbitals or rooms. So, bawat isa tiga dalawang electrons, kaya 10. And then, F, 7 orbitals, 15 electrons. So, S, 1 orbital, P, 3 orbital, D, 5 orbitals, F, 7. So, times 2 lang, yun yung number of electrons na uh, meron siya. So, pag pinagsama-sama natin to, ito yung pinagbasihan kanina yung pinakatawa sa inyo na first energy level, dalawa lang. Second energy level, 8. Ito yun, pinag pinagbasihan nun. Diba? You have the energy levels, base sa number na yan, yun din yung bilang ng kanyang subshell. Um, first energy level only has S, C2 has SP, 3 has SPDF, SPD, 4 has SPDF and the rest SPDF. Sa nakuha yung mga number na yan, 
base sa number of electrons sa taglay-taglay ng bawat subshells na yan. So, S, isa lang orbital. So, isang orbital can hold two electrons, kaya yung first energy level only has two electrons. Si second energy level, dalawang subshell, S can hold two, P can hold six, pag pinag-add natin, yun yung eight. SPD, dalawang electron ni S, anim na electron ni P, sampung electron ni D, pag pinag-add natin yung AK. So on and so forth. Okay? So yun yung pinag-basihan natin. So hopefully, naunawaan itong mga concepts na to.